Hello folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming a Game Link video. We are back and making regular content. Very excited about that. And it's been such a long wait. It suits and is kind of awesome that this one we're unboxing today uh, has finally arrived. The wait is finally over. What am I talking about? Today, I'm going to be taking you through a series of boxes detailing an adventure which puts you and a small band of heroes traveling out in the wilderness trying to track down and secure and defeat some very, very large, nasty beasties. What am I talking about? I am talking about the epic one from Reggie Games, which has finally arrived after all this time. I am talking about Primal The Awakening. Welcome back folks, thank you very much for joining me. For those who don't know me, and you should by now, my name is Matt and I have the distinct honour and privilege of bringing you some epic board game content once more. We have had a bit of a hiatus. Uh, for those of you who know, we've recently welcomed our third child into the world. Very, very exciting stuff. But uh, we need to get back into it. And so here we are sitting at the big boys table once more because there are some very big boxes that we have to get through today. Uh, as I said in the tease, we are talking about Reggie Games Primal The Awakening. Oh my God, this monstrosity is huge. Uh, and this is literally the uh, first box. We actually had the second box with all the expansions arrive out of turn. <laughs> and uh, I nearly went through and unboxed all that without actually uh, having the core box. But this is the core. Expansion boxes are here. Literally everything and everything I think that was available for this pledge has finally arrived after a very long wait. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping the wait has been worth it. But let's have a look and see. Got a trusty knife here. Uh, for those of you, yeah, that, that had back this one, um, want to hear your, your thoughts. What did you feel when the expansion box arrived, if that did happen to you, uh, without any core content? Uh, did you rip into it? Did you open it up? What's going on? I did see some other folk here in the land of Oz who had uh, had a similar experience. Um, very odd, no shipping notifications. In fact, this arrived, and then a day later I got a dispatch saying package one of two was on its way. Go figure, hey, we got it, that's the most important thing. We're gonna open up this box here. Oh my goodness, hopefully on the overhead you can see that absolute beautiful artwork. This is what I'm talking about. There is a party of adventurers like this against beasties like this. Uh, and I love that, I love that very much. We're gonna get the poly out. I'm gonna create a pile of rubbish today. Now, I did not realize the core was gonna be this big, um, but it makes sense because there's a lot of content. Uh, we're gonna try and rip this out of here. Look at this thing. Um, this is a very heavy box, I have to say. Um, uh, Thyria, I think, is the name of the place where this is sort of set. Um, the artwork on for this production has been amazing. It's been a long haul trying to get everything sorted for this game, I imagine, but um, worth the wait. I don't know if you can see it there. The, uh, the artwork there is pretty sick. I dig it. Uh, first and foremost, though, I'm going to put this one on the overhead. And you know what? No, let's take this off here first, because there is going to be a lot of plastic today, uh, which is good because I'm running low on boxes for shipping. Uh, those of you who don't know, we run an online store as well. Oh my gosh. This is going to take some doing. I hope you've got a coffee or something, folks. We're going to be here a little while. And this is just the core. All right, let's get that plastic out of here. Let's put that up on the overhead as well. There we go. Whoop. Plastic, of course, goes on the floor. All right, let me pull my chair. I just, it's... Oh. Less is more, and the fact that it's the white box and you've got the wings extending down the sides, it's just... <sighs> now, I believe this is the big, 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 big bad because this has a campaign element as well as just, you know, skirmish battles, etc. So I'm excited to see how that works. Lots of different game modes. Uh, it is a deck 
builder crafting game where you can level up your heroes and, and modify the decks to obviously make them stronger. Um, each boss, as far as I'm aware, has separate levels as well. And there's one main board with quadrants. So depending on your attacks, you have to make sure you coordinate your assaults so that you're in the right quadrant to deal damage to the boss. It's a whole thing. Uh, let's try, and I do mean try. Oh my gosh, this is such a heavy box. To lift that bad boy off there. Oh my gentle Jesus. Now, I am going to get in close for the minis. I'm going to bring the overhead down. Um, but for the purposes of now, I just want to go through the other elements first. And then we'll go through all the minis. And then we'll go through the expansion boxes. It's going to be a time. Um, I... Boss battles. Boss battles for days. And I really dig it. It's so awesome. I'm going to take this first tray out. We'll have a look at these fellows. Oh my god. The... The bases for some of these minis are like huge, absolutely huge. Okay, we've got more minis here because um, we have what looks to be uh, card decks and, and placeholders for cards, etc. Card trays and more. Uh, let's take a look at, we're going to get this out of here first. Silica gel, don't eat that. That can go away. We don't need that crap anywhere. You know what? Let's just take these out first. Oh, they're all stuck together. So let's see how we go. I do like that everything's branded as well with Primal logos, which is very cool. Rule books and more. The, look at that. Look at the rule book. Jeez. All right. Our campaign information, chapters for replayability. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how to get all this out of here. I love it. All right, let me just see how we go. Let's get this out. Let's put that up over here for now. Then the dragon will come and the dormant monsters will answer its call. It's a bit of threatening text on the side of the box. <laughs> uh, very threatening indeed. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm gonna bring this back in because the artwork is just sick. Uh, and then I'm gonna put these trays here. The extra bit of taping and things is a bit annoying, but that's okay. I designed, it's designed to stop things shifting in storage and shipping, which is kind of important, I suppose. Uh, look, let's bring this in here. This is so heavy. So many cards. I love it. Uh, for those of you who've been waiting for this, and it has been a long time, I think the Kickstarter campaign was back in 20, end of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I, ve I will obviously veto myself and correct myself. You'll see on the screen now uh, the actual date the Kickstarter campaign ran. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, and I remember them um, touting just the core, which we have here in front of us. And then, oh, expansions. Oh, vote on this, vote on that. And in the end, they just said, let's just make it all. Um, which is probably a good move on Reggie Games' behalf, I would imagine. Or part. Let's see, get more plastic for the floor. We have rule books and the campaign book as well. Uh, rule book, very straight. Well, hopefully it's probably not straightforward. It's huge. But the rule book has the same artwork on it. And this is overview, uh, expedition rules, the prologue, story mode, etc. How to read through the rule book so it gives you information gradually, which I kind of dig. Great for learning, uh, stance cards, solo mode, mastery cards, equipment decks, combat boards. You can see here you've got the flanks, the rear and the front. Hopefully you can see that on the overhead. How the boss might move, uh, terrain on the boards, uh, which I'm very excited about because I do like my terrain. Uh, for those of you who've been watching D&D videos, I have some stuff coming up about my Dwarven Forge stuff. Very excited for that. Um, how to set up uh, consuming a potion, how to play, stamina cost, turn structure. This is a lot. Wounding and damage. Ultimately, uh, rampage cards. I just sort of think about rampaging. Ah, uh, dear. Different bosses, different monsters. There are a lot of them. As you could see in that core box, there are a lot of minis and they take up a lot of space. Deck list levels for hunters, uh, different heroes that you can play as, and so on and so forth. Different color abilities, glossary, the works. I dig it. And then you have uh, a campaign book. Uh, the Prime Seekers, a uh, little forward there, and then how the thing works. Let's show you the map. The map of, uh, is it uh, Thyria? Thyria, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, you've got all the different bits. It looks like a Metroid map. 
Oh, very excited for Metroid Prime 4, by the way. Just a side note, that announcement over the weekend was awesome. Uh, last week, I should say. Uh, campaign chapters. Uh, let's, not, let's not get into that. I'll be doing that later. Sorry, I'm geeking out a bit because this has been on the cards for some time, and damn it, I'm going to enjoy getting into it because that's what we pay for. That's why that's the love of the game. That's, that's why we enjoy doing what we do, and I enjoy sharing my joy uh, with all of you. So hopefully, for those of you who are uh, waiting on this one still, uh, this will give you a taste of what to expect and what your appetite for the chaos to come. Oh, man. More plastic... There's already a massive pile of stuff here, and I'm not even through it all. So there's the map that we saw earlier. Uh, different, I'm assuming different cards will go here um, based on the different monsters that you can fight in that area. Is that double-sided? No, it's just blank. But I dig that. That looks cool. I'm going to put that up there out of the way. Now, this is the actual combat board itself. You have a round tracker here, or time track. Monsters go in the middle. Look at the corpses from these giant monsters. Your little mini is probably only about so big. The boss bases, as you saw, are quite large, which I think is fantastic. Um, there was, there's obviously terrain uh, punch outs that you saw in the box below me, but because we're awesome and because I can't do things by halves, there is a terrain pack in the expansion box for 3D um, terrain, and that's obviously gonna be awesome. I'll pop that one to the side up here. Now these are character boards, and I'm assuming are these, there's a lot of them, a lot more than first thought. I like character options, but knowing me, I'm gonna play through the campaign with the character uh, once or twice, and then just go into skirmish battles for the monsters I didn't come across. Uh, it very much, so there is a bit of a choose your own adventure element from what I understand to this. Um, there is choices to be made when you level up and gain experience and change your deck list in terms of powers that you can choose, uh, cards that will help you, um, uh, I guess, bolster your resources, if that makes sense. This one goes on the floor. Always through these, you've got Darion, who's a great sword, and I, I think he means great sword. Uh, you have uh, Mira, the great bow. She looks cool. Thoreg the hammer. Nice. Uh, is it Lenar? The sword and shield combination? That's kind of cool. And then you've got boss boards for Raxin. Karija, forgive me if I get that. That's awesome. The artwork's sick. Uh, Toramat, not to be confused with Tiamat. Uh, Digorax, Serious Business, Korowan, Uruxen, Phylaxia, that wolf looks cool, uh, Morkras, it's like a Godzilla looking one, uh, Ozu, like a bug monster, Jakoros, Hurum, it's like a serpent, lizard basilisk thing, Tarut, Taragua? Taragua, and The Awakened. Don't fight this first. <laughs> Word of advice. Uh, and then it looks like we've got some sort of time track for blank. Is that a blank one? Yeah. Maybe that's for uh, solo mode or something else. We'll see how that goes. Okay, put that to the side. Uh, we have different uh, level up boards, herbalists, metal forge, uh, different components of different modes, different things. There is a lot of stuff in this box, and there is a lot of a lot of plastic as well. I want to hear from you guys too. What have you been playing in the uh, in the downtime? Because a lot of stuff's been coming out. A lot of Kickstarters have been arriving. Uh, obviously, haven't been able to uh, broadcast and, and shoot a lot of content with everything that's been going on here. Um, everyone's out of the house today, so I have the place to myself. Um, what have you been playing? Uh, what games have you been running? Uh, we got Thunder Forge, Metal Forge, Coral Forge, Crystal Forge. Horn Forge, sorry if I'm not putting that in the middle of the, of the screen, Fire Forge, uh, level twos, level ones. So you can see your Orion Blade, uh, different uh, requirements to level those up. Uh, I do I do like that very much, that's very cool. Um, level one of all those items as well. Leveling up's important, especially when you get onto some of those bigger beasties. Uh, campaign boards and chapters, they give you trophies for the different monsters you can fight. Uh, quests, forge levels, achievements, and the Hunter's Trial. And there are quite a few of those. There's a lot of campaigning to be done. Uh, then you have a character sheet for the individual characters. So the player name and their class, uh, skill tree choices, notations, uh, elements that you can gather, plants, materials, and so on. And again, a lot of those as well, which I kind of dig, lots of replayability. Uh, and the opportunity to have, I guess, 
multiple campaigns going at any one time, um, which is kind of good. This is designed, I think, for up to four players, um, but having only four players does make it limited if you've got you know, a lot of different, a larger gaming groups. So being able to split that up, very, very cool. Uh, we have some cards. Let's go through punch outs and stuff like that. The punch outs look like they're mostly terrain, uh, which again, we may very well just discard altogether uh, because of what I said earlier, but I do like the colors on those and it will decorate the board a little bit and make it a bit less um, same samey, I guess. Forgive me if I'm hurrying, I just, we have a lot to do <laughs> and not a lot of time to get through it. Sand dunes, rocks, um, the chipboard is quite thick, uh, which is nice, it makes a good noise. You get different plants here as well, I'll put those to the side. Uh, different elements, so bows, etc. Uh, different damage types, double damage maybe. And I think, are these the same on the other side? I should just check. They are. Uh, these ones here are mostly terrain and they are the same, obviously potentially used and unused abilities. Uh, water, obstacles, smoke. Uh, and I think the token in the zone means the entire zone is affected, not just that particular spot where the token lands. Uh, I like the venomous plants and stuff as well, that's kind of dangerous. Uh, different counters, other bits and pieces as well, fire tokens, other symbols. Uh, same on the other side, but different. <coughs> same on the other side with different uh, numbers for different counters and values. Uh, then you've got what look to be other tokens for other things, uh, minus one draws, plus one damage, uh, time tokens, uh, what looks to be a heart marker for health, etc. for the beasties. And then of course damage tokens, um, banner standees, oh not a standee but you know what I mean. 50 points of damage, ouch. Hopefully that's not against you, it's uh, against the monster. Uh, different spiked terrain, maybe uh, maybe character deaths, monster deaths, targets, etc. Uh, wound markers galore, lots of wound markers here, but only in values of five, uh, with a couple of plus tens as well. Very very cool. All right, we have. Uh, I do like this little. It's got the sort of I don't know if you can see it. The primal uh, tray, uh, the marked or monikered um, thing, which is very cool. I like it. More stuff for the floor. Gosh. Hey, dividers. Nice, very nice. Dividers for all the different cards, decks, and everything else as well. Uh, we have uh, storage boxes or storage baggies, uh, dividers for weapons and other bits and pieces, and a, a sealed envelope with an S3 on it. Interesting. Do not open until instructed. Well, now I just want to open it. Simple as that. Uh, looks like we've got some dividers for different cards and tokens here. I will try and go through as many of the cards as I can, but we do have a lot to get through and I want to showcase off those minis because that's what the game is about. Uh, we have here uh, different uh, player decks and references, maybe. It's quite large cards, larger than the average standard uh, standard card size, which is kind of good. It means lots more real estate for text and other bits and pieces and, of course, artwork. So we have a level one greatsword. Uh, so these all have uh, weapon icons on the back at player aids here, and then you have a round structure, then you have different cards, S2, okay, so the S1, then you have different things like shields, axes, or hammers, bows, etc., and great swords. So these cards, obviously, base weapons, potentially. Um, increase the damage the attack deals by two and remove one struggle token. Uh, flame tongue, flame tongue level two, gosh, Flame Tunnel Level 3, Dragon Claw. Ooh, these are cool. And the artwork gets much more involved as you go. Blood Reef, that's a coral weapon, obviously. Blood Reef Level 2. Blood Reef Level 3. Shimmer Blade. Shimmer Blade. Look at these things, they're awesome. Uh, Iridian Sundra. Sundra, I should say. Uh, if I go too fast, you can pause the videos while we're shooting high def. Uh, Orion Blades. The weapons are cool. Ashbringer. Oh, look at that. Yes, please. Is there a level four of the Ashbringer? No. Tusk bow. Oh, man. These are cool. Coral Abyss. What does that look like when it's leveled up? Yeah. Death Sparkle. <laughs> Interesting name. Uh, lightning bows. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Iron bow, so maybe you can imbue the elements that the, of the creatures that you fight into the weapons that you wield. I love it. Burning stone, shell stone, a typhoon hammer. Oh, look at that. Radiant stone. 
Oh, it's so good. Shell Shock, Raw Stone, a Volcano Shield, Horn Wall, Ocean Shield. Yeah, these get more and more intense. Dark Stone, look at this thing. Thunder Core, a Brass Wall, Ancient Bows. Okay, cool. Lots of weapons and things to choose from. Lots of things to work towards in terms of level ups, which is very, very cool. Uh, it just strives you just one more round, one more monster. Let's fight one more boss. But there's never just one more boss. There's always, always more. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. True to form. All right, we've got some smaller cards here. Now these look like they are uh, different for different things, different symbols. Again, I'm not entirely sure of all the different mechs uh, mechanics just yet. Uh, individual numbered items. So I think these items are uh, story cards potentially. So we'll keep those relatively secret. And then you've got uh, different card counters for maybe initiatives maybe. Find out what that, that symbology means. Uh, and then you've got cards that need to be revealed when things happen. So it could be for solo mode, other bits and pieces as well. I'm sure we'll find that out. Uh, we're gonna put these cards here and the dividers here. Now we have, again, more, uh, look at secondary weapons, I guess. Uh, I do love the dividers, they look good. I'm gonna, gonna have fun sort of carding this all up before I get into it. Uh, so these are potions, and we've also got what appears to be extra bits and pieces as well. As I said, maybe secondary weapons. Uh, lightning whips or electric whips, I should say. Uh, lots of electric, electric daggers. These are cool iron greaves, plate armors, etc. explosives. So throw some hand grenades around. Uh, Alamore, uh, which will give you uh, healing, I guess, top of attrition piles. Alamore, level two, level three, level three. Evoke. Oh man. So many options, so little time. I'm gonna get into this deck quickly. And again, I think the S1, S2 cards I'm probably not meant to be looking at, but there's so many cards I'm gonna forget. What's on them anyway? Um, if I do reveal something that I shouldn't, uh, my apologies, but uh, yeah, you have been warned. Uh, this is an unboxing S2s, and then we have more potion cards and item cards. So this is, yeah, item decks, etc. Evoke level two, that looks sick. They didn't have to make these cards look like this, but having them looking like they do is, is pretty damn awesome. Well, that's cool. Claws. Claws, hearts, cards, more cards, etc. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I think looking at these, um, these must be player decks here for the individual uh, characters that you can play as. Um, and I like the idea that you could potentially just name them your own, whatever you want to call them, and go from there. A bit like a, a D and D adventure, which is very awesome. All right, we have uh, more of these crystal helms, thunder helms. Weapons, shields, iron helms, gauntlets, lava bucklers, a skeletal spear or a skeletal spear, big jaws, nice trap, I like that. Coral tridents, I like the theming from the different regions. It's very, very clever and it gives them artistic license to create some amazing, amazing weapons as well. Uh, gauntlet of shell blade, uh, crystal spears, shimmering boots, and electric whips we saw before. So what I'm gonna do is take that out. I'm gonna put these ones here because that way they're in some semblance of order. All right, nearly there, nearly at minis, nearly mini time. For box one. So many boxes. Uh, base armor, we don't want that. Base armor is rubbish, red scale armor. Spined armor, yeah, I love that they get progressively more badass. Reef man plate. Uh, you got crystal armor, uh, a thunder armor for lightning damage, iron plate, some more basic stuff. Base helms, red scale helm, spined helm, reef bound helm again, crystal helm. It's interesting that you obviously start off not, not very well equipped, but obviously things progress as you go. Uh, very, very cool indeed. We've got some uh, inserts here which we're going to get rid of because they are not important anymore. Uh, let's see what we've got here. And again, I'm going to try and keep these together because I don't know what each card is for. Yet. <laughs> Yet. I want to keep this box on display, but it's very, very massive. And I'm missing that. I mean, the dragon is there. So, I've, although 
I will I will admit where this is is probably where the OB <laughs> shown through so it's probably not really uh, doing it justice you know what let's pop this to the side because it's a big box so we'll go from there all right we have uh, I'll show you the card backs so these are oh monster cards uh, some other automata, maybe other cards as well. I, again, don't know all the, what, all the things that haven't had a chance to go through read book, the, the rule book. Uh, it looks like they could be in order, potentially. More monsters, monster cards, because oh, the monsters have their own deck as well, that's right. So they obviously have the opportunity to uh, attack back uh, and do all sorts of chaos to you, which is, that's their job. That's their job, is to try and eat you alive, uh, well and truly. Uh, so we have all these cards here, which again look like shields, tactics, etc. Different ability cards, chase, deep breath, wound, unbreakable. So I guess you can draw wounds from your own deck as well. Ooh. Now there is a color, a, a recipe um, mechanic as well, where you use different colors for different things and combining colors helps you to do combo attacks, etc. cetera. Um, but I'll be obviously reading up about that uh, in the coming days uh, before we get this one to the table. I don't know, there's a lot to go through. That card tray is very heavy. Uh, and this is just the base box. As I said, there's a whole lot of stuff that's here. Uh, more boss cards, uh, more um, enemy cards, enemy decks, uh, things they do to try to kill you uh, in spectacular fashion. Lots of boss cards to fight, uh, lots of boss minis, as you can see. Uh, what I might do is I'll grab the um, other three minis in there first. That's one thing I'm yet to see. Oh no, they're here. The player minis. <laughs> kind of important to have player minis on this in this game as well. Monster decks once more. Monster decks, monster decks, monster decks, monster decks. And then you've got different debilitating cards. Oh my gosh. So some of these decks for these monsters are huge. That is all monsters as well. So there's two full packs of just monster cards plus another half a deck of monster cards. And the rest of these here look like they're player cards. So lots of monster cards, not so much player cards. Uh, you're gonna have to be very, very on the ball and very aware of the mechanics of the game before you're gonna take these bad boys on. All right, so we have things like Relentless Assault, uh, reduces stam stamina cost of all abilities you play by one, Swordmaster, Slash to the Flanks. You see the colors here, they all mean different things and playing cards at the same suit potentially gives you a bonus. Um, Blind Rage, uh, Action Points I think is the cost to play them or acquire them. Storm of Arrows, Burst, Adrenaline Shot, Targeted Shot, Rapid Burst, Bouncing Shot, Blinding Shot, Intuition, Decoy, Sneaky Glide, Refill the Quiver, always a good idea. Second Chance, Take Aim, a Retreating Shot, Lateral Jump, Final Reckoning, Finisher. Remove one struggle and increase the damage of this attack deals by one for each of the red cards in your discard pile. Okay, so if you have lots of red cards in your discard pile, it's gonna potentially give you uh, a lot of power, massive blow, devastating strength, dragon tamer, blood rush. The names of the cards are awesome. Sledgehammer, disruption, decisive effort endeavor, recycle two cards, uh, mighty strain, evasive action, impressive strike, adrenaline, draw X cards, dragon bane. Oh my gosh, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I, I'm here for it, I'm not gonna lie, here for it. All right, so that's this here. I'm gonna put those ones back there. I'm gonna put those ones on here. Let's put this card tray lid back on here. Other than that, it's mini time. So we are going to, in fact, the boxes in the other box are quite, in quite, are quite smaller. So we may well bring the overhead down permanently. Uh, we'll show you these minis. Um, I won't be able to bring it down too hard because some of these minis are quite large. Um, but we will bring it in and we'll get into those minis because they're sick. Uh, let's, let's have a bit of a look. My goodness, there is so much stuff here. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm just going to try to <laughs> put these to the side only because there is a lot, a lot going on. Okay, so we have uh, different minis here. We have what appears to be our friend. Uh, this is our uh, longsword. Nice pose too. I think it's similar to the ones on the card. Very, very cool. That shield's nice too on the back. I dig it. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. Uh, then we have our sword and shield combination. Uh, that shield, look at that. 
I wish I had more time to paint. Because seeing these on the table, they're all going to start to blend in. Um, even the helm, look at that, it's like a bear helm. Very cool. Um, I, I, I do paint on occasion. I don't paint enough as I should. I just do not have the time, which is why uh, for a lot of my D&D games, I buy minis that are pre-painted or, or acquire minis that are pre-painted. Um, it's a sick bow. Oh, the spikes, it's dangerous. Deadly, she is gorgeous. Um, just like my wife. Um, the um, Yeah, just finding the time to paint the minis. Uh, it's it's a labor of love and for those of you that do it for those of you who get this game and paint not just these guys but the monstrosities that are here my hat goes off to you um you are more patient than i uh, we have uh, our hand this is the hammer there he is ah uh, it's, it's a little a little uh, apocalyptic elden ring-esque i guess if that makes sense, if I can use that term, and I know a lot of people will be like, eh, what are you talking about? But um, I don't know, Just it's, it's just, that's the vibe I get. All right, now with this one off and ready to go, we're gonna have a look at some of these. Now, I did think we saw some of these in the uh, rule book. This is that uh, serpentine basilisk looking. Now, just for comparison, I mean, this is our long sword fellow here. That's the size comparison, and these aren't even the big ones. It's just, ah, oh, they're so good. So the detail on this guy is sick. I just hope that the camera is doing it justice. Look at the claws. Look at the, the scales that are underneath here on the underbelly. It's so good. Oh, man. The artists who've put these together. Spectacular work. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then you've got this crab scorpion. I oh, just, it's just so ridiculous. Uh, maybe I have to make an exception and paint up these minis so I can use them in uh, just... They are terrifyingly beautiful, I think is the best way to put them. Look at the shell on this thing. And then the coral and everything else that's built in here. No wonder those weapons look absolutely boss. All right, uh, horns in there too. And this is that uh, sort of Vulpix Wolven Chaos, there's a nine tails, look at that. Oh man. Uh, I hope they're getting bigger as well. <laughs> I'm glad I left the uh, camera up a little bit because these things are just huge. And just trying to fit everything in to see it is, is obviously getting a bit, uh, a bit difficult. There we go. So the horns here and then the little horns here, tusks. It's like a... Uh, like a dis displacer beast on crack. I love it. I love it. For those of you who don't know me, uh, who haven't watched the channel before, I do play a lot of d and I am a pro dungeon master. So I do uh, reference it in most of my everyday life conversations. My apologies, but you also I'm not sorry. Um, that's just the first four boss monsters. There are a lot more here. So let's just take a look at some of those. Where should we start? Let's go the other side of the spectrum. We've got here a very nasty, <laughs> it's, look at this thing. Oh my gosh. I love it. Absolute anger. It looks like there's um, scorch marks and, and, and rock, maybe lava coming through. The tail has extra bits sinking out of it. It's not a coral monster. I'm, I, it's, it's just, this thing means business in every way, shape and form. And I'm so happy to let it just run amok. Uh, then we have, uh, this is, this is like a spiny sort of wooden bone creature. I can't remember the names. It's got this massive heavy head here. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is a jaw just under the side there. Oh, it's so good. And the textured um, bases that they're on too, just give them a little bit more give. A bit more life. They're heavy too, very heavy in terms of their weight. Uh, you don't want to drop them though. I can imagine that would be very, very bad. There we go. And then we have this is our, uh, our Tuscan uh, Tarask, but not creature. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, look, the horns there it means business. Look at this. It's just absolutely incredible. I love it. I love it. 
I know that I have been able to use um, Zombicide minis in the past in, in, other, in other capacities in way, shapes and forms. This will be another one of those games, I think. Uh, oh, one of the lightest bases so far. This is that uh, little bug, dude. Maybe give you more top downs like that too, because that's very cool. Very cool indeed. It's like a scarab beetle of death. Probably one of the smallest ones that we've come across so far, but definitely not uh, <laughs> not the least in terms of destruction. Uh, then uh, let's go here. Again, this is just the core. Uh, something like this, which is a big ass bone-headed dragon of death. Uh, this is this is fabulous. I love it so much. These are great. Really, really good. Uh, worth a wait? Yes, I would think so. Um, yes, they sit on the table, on the board, and they go boom, boom, boom. That's it, but it's about theming. And if you just had a standee there, I just don't think it would do it justice. I mean, table presence, it's what it's all about, really. Ultimately, a game is only as good as its mechanics and its table presence, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. And having a game that does speak volumes and looks spectacular on the table it gives you that more immersion and people get more involved, people get more passionate and ultimately have a better time. And that is, that is what it's about for me. Uh, this guy's a very serious contender for the longest one. Uh, he's got that sharp pointy thing here, that tail. Yeah, look at that. Swishy, swishy. You got that axe thing on the tail as well, which is nice, boss. Uh, I don't know if that was in focus. We'll do that. There we go. Um, the spine's rolling along the back here. Very cool. That hooked claw. Like a velociraptor creature. Who knows? Ah, oh, so good. So, so good. All right. Then we have... Uh, we've had a look at this one. We? No, we have not. Is this a salamander one we talked about? Look at the spines on this thing. The ridges. Ah, oh, it's so good. And that whip crack when his whoppy tail and the beast was done. That is, it's, I'm losing ways to describe these because I think the minis themselves do it justice. Uh, as a Godzilla sort of style thing, I don't know, it's crazy. Um, we've had, yeah, we'll do this one. I'm just making sure that I get them all through. Here we go. <laughs> this is, I, it's just, they just look amazing. The textured board that they are stand that they're on, the base, I should say, the wings, even the underside is all textured as well. We've spent a lot of time making sure these look the business. I know the community really got behind them as well, encouraging them, uh, giving them instructions, suggestions, etc. And they took all that on board. Uh, and as a result, yes, there was a weight, but uh, it just looks a much better polished product for a result, as a result, I should say. Now, that big fella you saw in the box before, he's next. And he looks like this. It's just huge. Again, I'm just gonna do a comparison. Let's see, let's get our uh, sword and shield. Like that's that's what we're looking at here. That's the chaos that we have wrought. Um, the tail is actually separate. That's not all stuck on there. That's loose, it's been sculpted that way, which I think is very risky, but also incredibly rewarding. Uh, the leather of the wings, I don't know if you can see that is all through here too. Um, the actual base of the head of the beast, the tongue, the whole thing is just, this is the piece de la resistance, so to speak. Uh, I just, it's the spine, they're sharp to a point, obviously, um, along the back here as well. One thing I, it's its hard because that's, they're doing their best and all the rest of it, and they've done a spectacular job. But the join line here kind of, I can't do anything about it, but paint it up, it'll probably, you wouldn't even notice that it's there. But um, as a result, even then, having said all that, I mean, it's just, looks amazing so good so so good oh my goodness now i can't even get them back in the box you watch wow okay that is everything in the core uh there is a lot more to get through and 
This is probably going to take a lot longer than I expected. Let me clear some of this away and we'll go through the expansion boxes that we have available. All right, we're back. I've made some space because <laughs> that was huge. And that is just the core, as I said before. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six more boxes to get through. Uh, and that is before we even begin to comprehend how to put all this together, etc. Um, now, in terms of monsters, there's plenty in that box. There were so many different boss monsters to fight. There was even the four smaller ones and they got larger and larger and larger. That's never enough, in my humble opinion. So, we have these mini expansions. Uh, and I say mini, but they're you know, obviously not quite so many. Uh, and these will give you uh, different uh, components, different monsters, etc. based in the boxes, more monster decks, etc., and all that sort of stuff. So this is a feather expansion. Uh, there is also ice, there is also venom, there is also terrain expansions, there is a nightmare box, because of course there is, um, and uh, Mount Havoc, I think as well, which is another one. So this is literally, I think, everything other than playmats and other bits and pieces that you could get uh, for this game. Uh, if I'm missing anything, then uh, <laughs> Reggie Games by all means, send it my way, please. Um, plastic, of course, goes on. The mess that is here <laughs> is just... I'm going to try and get all this sort of... So here you go, artworks there, look at that. The Feather Expansion Primal, uh, the Feather Expansion. This guy means some serious business. Let's lift the lid and see what's inside. Uh, I'm also very conscious of the fact that uh, this is, oh, there's just so much. It's just, it's, it's so meaty. And I love that. Meatiness in a game is very important to me. I want to be able to have it, replay it, sit with it, and all the rest of it. Uh, the talks about the feather expansion here, and I am zoomed in close because uh, of how it all works. So uh, uh, just new rules for the specifics of the monsters there. Oh, there's multiple monsters in the God damn it, campaign books. So here you have uh, the Feather Forge for, because obviously when you, if you defeat, you can use different cards for different things. I love it. Uh, you have here uh, the boss boards for Parsis and Naja, Nagaraja. Look at the art on that. You can see it, it's in there, that's it. And then you've got the uh, sort of, um, I don't know, the, uh, what's it, Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park sort of situation, and the Feather Forge as well. Oh, so excited. Silica Jelkin, go away, we don't need you. We've got some tokens, again, uh, more terrain. These are actually nice, um, quite, again, quite nice chipboard. Uh, I'll get that out of the way. We've got some cards. Now, these look like they are cards for uh, the players. So you've got uh, the uh, Wind Blade that's here in different levels, the Air Swan, the Earth Shaker, Shard shield, oh, so good, so good, so good. Now I'm hoping these aren't taped up because it's gonna really annoy me if they are. I get where they do it, but taping up absolutely everything uh, for, I, I guess they have to for shipping to cover their own butts, but gosh, it's so annoying <laughs> to have to get through everything, especially when uh, you're unboxing things for the first time. So these look like the little secret -y, uh, envelope things here. Uh, again, story elements, we'll keep those hush-hush, so to speak. We'll put those back in there where they were. Uh, then we have little mini cards. Now these are mini cards that are, I may not go through all these in the expansion boxes, only because of these are more uh, item cards, weapons, etc. like we saw in the call. And again, with secrets. So things like your totemic plate, uh, base plates, etc. Uh, oh, lots of different. So you, lots of players can have these. That's kind of cool. Helms. I do like, again, the artwork is, increase, is increasing as uh, you go through levels. Feathered coats, etc. It's very jungle themed, similar to the... Oh, a boomerang. That's cool. What's level three boomerang look like? Oh, I think it's a level two. Oh, no. Level three. There we go. More feathers. More potions, rings, that's new. Didn't see any of those in the base box. We'll get rid of that and put that away there. There we go. Uh, and then we have the monster deck uh, that's there as well. Uh, I'll unplastic it. Now, two monsters per box is kind of great. I uh, kind of dig that. So you've got Parsis, different stances, etc. And then you have uh, Najaraz, Najaraja, Naharaja. I know what I mean. I know what I mean. It goes in there. This one goes across the top. That can go on here. Now, here's what we all came to see. Let's do this. Let's get these out of the way. Now, we have the... Oh, they're stuck in. That's annoying. This is um, 
Pazes. Yes, Pazes. Uh, I like that it's sort of a peacock style monster. I kind of dig it. And then you've got that little sort of look here. And it's a little bit humanoid as well, but not. Ah, so good. So, so good. I dig it very much. I'm going to put him back in there. And this is uh, Naharaja. Uh, Naharaja? I keep... Ra... Nagaraja. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Reggie Games. Uh, so this is Nagaraja. Uh, I like the feathered tail as well. And the fact that we're on the rock. Clawing out. Again, a smaller beastie. But deadly in its own way. And I think that's very, very awesome. Uh, so, that's very cool. I, I'm not sure which monster I want to fight first. I may not want to fight any of them, to be perfectly frank. Uh, that is the Feather expansion. We're going to put that one away. And then we have our uh, next expansion, the Venom expansion. And no, it's not Tom Hardy in a box, ladies. I'm sorry. It'd be nice, but no. Not today. Not today. Plastic on the floor, and there it is. Now... That is a nasty mofo right there. Um, <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'll take the lid off here and then we'll get into it. I do like the green tint and the logo as well, which is very cool. Um, very serious business there. Uh, there you go. Look at this guy. I love it. So each each expansion is going to come with its own rule set, etc. Um, for the different components, the Venom Forge. That's awesome. I want to get something from the Venom, for Venom Forge. You've got Hydar, and then you have a Recal or Raycal. Uh, they look absolutely terrifying. Uh, this one can go away. Uh, we don't need those anymore. We've got extra tokens for poison. We've got extra. Oh, a Cobra. That's cool. Which makes thematic sense. Uh, I won't go through the cards, only because um, we sort of know what the cards are going to look like. We get the armor and everything else as well. I will show you the miniatures. Uh, should I do the cards? Should I, do the cards? Uh, should I be a completionist and do the cards? Let's see how we go. We've got uh, the Cobra here at level one, level two, and level three. That looks sick. Spider Needle. Oh, nice. Oh, man. Dragon's Bane. These are so good. Serpent Shield. That's... The artwork is so good. All right. All right. All right. Give me a second. All right. I'm a completionist. What can I say? I like to do things to the best of my ability. And ultimately, I owe it to all of you, uh, our loyal viewers, to show you um, not all the cards, obviously, not, the, uh, not all the boss cards, but the art on some of these is just fabulous. So we have Hydar uh, and all of his stances here. Uh, we have all of the cards there, Poisonous Vines, Venom, because that's what this whole expansion is about. Uh, Ray Carl, I can't, the mini for... Oh, I just, it's so good. Uh, this, these bosses here, these monsters, I'm looking forward to taking an axe to. Um, only because of the challenge that they've posed with their venomous poisons, etc., that spread out across the map. Um, the story elements I won't go into because I don't want to spoil... Uh, anything for myself, let alone for anyone else who's watching. Uh, I don't want to get texts from people or comments from people saying, hey, this is, uh, there was no spoiler warning. Um, I'm unboxing. That's the spoiler warning right there. All right, let's put that on the floor. Then we have some iron leaf armor. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. Level two. Level three, the spikes in the, the I love it. What else we got? We got uh, helms. Nice. Oh, the spike is awesome. Look at that. That's cool as. Worth it, worth it. The Blood Seeker. Nice. Where's level two? And we go. And then I want level three. Come on. Yeah, Blood Seeker. Doesn't change as much, but still looks awesome. The back, the black spin. It's like a boomerang sort of situation. What does that look like at level three? Nice. And then we have a Dagger Heart at level 3, Serpent Belt, Void Stare, Vitalis. Each time you deal damage, you heal too. Wow. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Then we have... Uh, we have Hydar. There he is. Look at him. It's like a big iguana sort of situation 
I mean, I imagine these are smaller animals and then they get that thing from like um, Rampage that just go nuts. Uh, not the film, not the film. I'm talking about the video game, the OG video game. Oh, so good. So, so good. Love it, love it, love it. And then we have Raycal. Raycal looks like this. And is quite a bit larger than our friends, but look at that more. If you saw that, you would shit your pants. Oh man, it's got the venom sacs on the side here. Oh, it's so good. So good. Oh, the wood component as well, it's really nice too. Even, even this, the musculature and the skin texture. Now there's a join here, but it's not as obvious. And the throat, look at that. Oh my gosh, so good. So, so good. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Hopefully I can get them back in the box. All right, two of six, and now we have the ice expansion, uh, which is uh, all that ice, uh, funnily enough. Who knew? Um, it's, it's just so much, I, I dig it. There's so much going on here. In these expansions alone, let alone the core box, and then adding these into the mix. The additional armors, uh, all that stuff. Plastic on the floor, I love it, it's great. Um, the artwork there, you can see this guy means business here. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Gosh, I've been shooting for more than an hour now. Craziness. There he is, means business. Uh, campaign rules, extra rules, the ice forge. Yes, because why not? Let's have an ice forge. Then we have Sirkaj. I hope you can see there. There you go, Sirkaj. And then you have Mamurak. Uh, and then the artwork on the back, unhindered. That is awesome. Uh, Frostblade, because frost mourn hungers. I love it. Plastic on the floor. Frostblade, level one, level two, level three. That's awesome. North floor. Froljark. The Ice Wall. We saw a couple of the shields named uh, Ice Wall, etc., which is kind of good. Uh, tokens, ice sculptures, or ice in the way. Silica gel can get out of here. Uh, all right, give me a second to open up these and we'll show you what's in there. All right, some armor. Let's get into it. Oh, so much plastic. <laughs> it wasn't, I think last time I had this much plastic was a Resident Evil Alpha Pledge. That was involved as well. Uh, you have frost armor, uh, level two frost armor is there. I kind of like the frost armor, that looks kind of boss, digging it. Uh, then you have frost helms, and then they graduate frost helm level two, looks a bit warmer, level three looks boss. Uh, then you have frozen boots, as opposed to your normal boots, just the heart and the boots, yeah. Uh, frozen boots and they get more nasty with their cleats and everything else as well which is very cool then you have wrist bow oh that's awesome that's level one that looks sick uh wrist bow at level two so more claws more deadly and then you have level three look at that i'll take two uh then we have the ancestor's gift unanox Edenox, I should say, Northern Star. Ice, which is a bladed weapon, Celestia. I like that. If the current attrition level is one or lower, heal 15 points of damage. <whistles> Gotta enjoy that. And then we have boss decks here. And then what we all came to see. Boss monsters! Do -do 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 -do. I'm getting massive glare coming in here. We're running out of time before the sun just washes us out, but that's okay. Uh, Siakaj, stance one, how they attack, etc., where they stand. More cards, and then you've got Mamarak, which Mamarak looks involved. I do like the northern lights and things like that in the background of these guys too. Um, here's Siakaj. Sneaky little bugger. Again, a smaller base, but I mean, this guy means business. Uh, I do like the spines along there as well. Woolly prepared for the colder months of the year. I dig it. Sakaj means business. And then you have uh, Amarak, who 
who is a considerably larger beast. <laughs> uh, you can see he's sort of part moose, part, I don't know, ice beast, which I think is cool. Look at that. His tusks, big, big nostrils as well. Come on, man. Ah. Oh. You know what? I'd be quite happy to die against these monsters because I know I'd go out in a blaze of glory. Um, that is, uh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm here for it. I, I don't, I don't know. I know it's uh, probably frowned upon in some way, shape or form, but. All right, we are nearly there. We've got another three boxes to go. Some of them will take a little bit quicker than, I will be a little bit quicker than others. This is the Mount Havoc expansion now. Uh, and this is, I think, literally a brand new set of uh, players or choice character options, etc. Probably a monster or two as well. Let's be honest, this is a boss battler after all. And I do like the fact that combat is literally one fight per game or per session. But what an epic fight it would turn out to be. Um, I think the fun part of this is too, is that well, one of the other fun aspects of this is not just the boss battle. Plastic on the floor. But also the... Um, character building, uh, RPG style, if you will. Uh, there is the artwork for the Mount Havoc expansion. Uh, that, uh, that last means business with that boat, that's for sure. Uh, let's get this one open here and we'll see what we have here. So the Mount Havoc expansion has a few extra components. The rule book is considerably more intense uh, and it involves things like uh, all the extra components, uh, the extra heroes, the new boards, uh, or the overrun example, hunter deck lists for the different hunters that are out there, uh, a campaign mode specifically for this one here, and then you have uh, Hellerin, the heavy gun, you have Kara, the dual blade, tokens for days, uh, because you know, what's, what's tokens that everything else, and then you have things like the fire forge, etc. So this is uh, effectively a whole new set of campaign content or expansion to the base campaign, I should say. And if I'm going to play through it, I want that uh, Diablo 2, um, what was it? Lord's Corruption, um, Bail uh, expansion. Fire Forge, Horn Forge, Crystal Forge, Thunder Forge, a whole lot of forges for different levels, and they're all included in the um, expansions as well. So that's interesting. Uh, campaign uh, modes. And this is for the trophies for uh, the uh, different monsters uh, that we've spoken about. Uh, then you have two new minis here. Now this is the dual uh, bladed warrior. They look sick. I dig it. She means business. Gonna kick some ass with those. Uh, and then you have the gun, which is so ridiculous, but I kind of love it. It's like a big, Railgun, bow, assault, chain gun. Oh, just, it's stupidly awesome. And I love it so much. Uh, nothing in the inside lay. And this one, I didn't have to take the uh, the tape off of. So that was nice. All right, let's get into this. We're nearly there, folks. Thank you for your patience if you got this far. I'm hoping with my editing, it would have cut down a bit in terms of the time. But uh, for me, I've been here a while. <laughs> Uh, the dual blade, and these are level one. Uh, dragon wings, that's sick. I love you got multiple build options for these things. Dancing bones. Uh, we've got, there you go, tidal wave. So these are all different weapons based on the different um, uh, monsters that you may come across. Shimmering stars, they're cool. That's awesome. Uh, Volt rage. Volt rage at level one looks vicious, level three. There you go, and then you have the Moon Blades, nice. That's cool. Twin Blades, I mean, they're all Twin Blades, let's be honest. Vipers, that's cool, Venom, um, Venom Magic. Ice Wings, oh, they're all good, I can't decide. A Gunbow, because of course it is. Uh, Ignis, oh, these are cool. It, the Tiger, that's nice. I like that. An Ocean Gun. What does, it shoot? what does an ocean gun shoot? I wonder. It just does. Amethyst. I like amethyst. That's kind of cool. I like that. Electroblast, because yes, of course, we would have a, a lightning gun. Mother gun. I think there's meant to be a, another letter here between mother and gun, an F. Um, and <laughs> anyway, the winged cannon is there. I like that too. That's nice. Reptile. Different styles of venomous weapons. That's cool. Frost gun. 
Ancient Blades level three, Ancient Gunbow, Celestial. Oh, they're so cool. And player references for both of the characters as well. Oh, that's so good. I, I dig it. I dig it. It's interesting. It probably didn't need to be quite so big of a box, but um, it is really. And again, I mean, the amount of cards that are here. Silica Gel goes on the floor. So these will be the player decks for these two folk. And you saw in the um, the rule book there deck lists for the two characters as well, which is kind of good, kind of handy for when you're putting things together. We'll quickly whiz through these and have a look at the armaments that are there as well. And I do like that they've got a slightly different back for the Mount Havoc expansion too. Uh, Piercing Dash, we have Blade of Vengeance, Half Moon, Wall of Blades, I love it, Finesse, Twin Blades, these are all the double-bladed uh, Assassin Double Strike. Fade, Blade Rush, Fighting Sprint, Wound Cards, avoid those at all costs, Heat. Uh, Hail of Blades, Ballistic Defense Bomb, but not this time, Recharging, Strafing, so the assist mechanic is interesting as well because you want to almost try and do that to give your fellow um, warriors or hunters things to uh, boons for their uh, next turns. Reloads, targeting acquisition, suppressive fire, blinding fire, a prompt answer, camouflage. There is a lot. Debility, bleeding, paralyzing, venom. We don't want those. Wound, and then different monsters to draw. So you can draw them blindly. That's cool. There must be a way then to uh, effectively draft the different boss that you're going to be facing. Uh, and I kind of kind of like that. It's um, a good mechanic. It's a good mechanic. And I think um, if you're doing a skirmish game and you've played this with one or two other folk, even if you're just playing it solo, I like the idea of being able to randomize your choices. You don't have to think about, oh, hang on, what am I going to do this time? It's a similar with um, uh, Final Girl. One of the add-on packs for one of the seasons of Final Girl uh, was a, a randomizer, a Necronomicon uh, d a deck box or dice box, which had three sets of dice or a set of three dice that you could then use to roll up the girl you'd play with, the board you'd play on, the, the villain you'd face, etc. which is very, very cool. I, d I did enjoy that uh, randomization mechanic as well. Oh, we'll turn this around the right way. Uh, base armor, which we saw in the other box, red scale armor, spined armor, that's kind of cool. Uh, reef bound plate. Crystal armor, I think we saw some of these before. Iron plate, base helms, red scale helms, reef bound helms. So just extra details for extra cards for these extra players. I wonder if that means you could potentially play the game with six. I think that would maybe make it too, uh, make the, the party OP, but you could always beef up the others. Big jewels, we saw those before too. Gauntlet of blue, yep, we saw all these before. These are more of the same. Then you got potions, potions for days and some extra bits and pieces of the celestial armor and whatnot as well. I think there was some story cards in the other boxes that I didn't look at deliberately. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, campaign packs, etc. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. There is so much going on in these boxes. We still have two more to go. I have a feeling um, that one of these is gonna have a few more bits and pieces as well in terms of uh, more monsters to fight because why not? Why not? All right, let's get this one out of the way and we'll move on to our second to last box. Uh, that was a Mount Havoc expansion. I like that um, being able to uh, roll with a few extra folk is um, just gives you more options, more replayability, etc. Now, because this is primal, because this is about monster fighting and everything else, there is, of course, this bad boy as well. The Nightmare expansion with this big scary guy on the top here. Uh, there is a volcano spewing forth ash on the back. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, open this one up. Now, I will not, if I can get the plastic off of this thing, I will not be taking on the Nightmare expansion first up. I'm tempted, but uh, maybe not. This guy means business. Um, I think it's something to work up to, I guess, uh, the Nightmare expansion. I mean, with most cases, I do eventually get to that point. I know that now when I play Halo, I play on Mythic. That's it. Uh, there's no better way to play Halo, in my opinion. It just feels um, more spectacular. Uh, so we have Nightmare expansion. Now, this is going to be uh, monsters, deck boards, monster boards, etc. Uh, and these are, I think, variant versions of existing monsters from other boxes. So campaign book for Nightmare Unleashed, quest scenarios, or that quest, quest scenarios, not quest, quest scenarios. Um, but yes, then you've got uh, 
Taras Taresca, uh, Zikep. Whoa, these guys mean business. Zekalith. You can see there are variants of these guys, and then you've got Zithiros. Oh my gosh! Don't need that. Get rid of that. Uh, tokens. Wow. Wow, all right, let me take uh, all of this out of here. All right, so we've got some cards here uh, for different boss creatures. Now, I think, again, uh, these are, well, I was gonna say they were different um, variants of the same, but uh, I think there's one monster that, that, that duplicates itself, if that makes sense. So you've got Takasha, Tarashka, sorry, uh, as a boss monster, and then you've got the different um, monsters for Zithiros, etc. In that particular deck, uh, we have some armor cards, it looks like here as well. Story cards, which I won't go into. Decks, decks, there's nothing else in there. Cool, okay, so those ones are gonna go up and over there for now. We've got a couple of sneaky little bits. A flaming pendant, Embrax, and another Embrax. So more uh, cards that you can use to bolster your uh, your heroes, or your hunters, as they're known. Gosh. It's a lot. It's a lot. What hero of the six that we've seen would be one you would suggest we take out for a spin first? Maybe which two, because I know Charlotte's keen to get into this as well, although I think it might be a little bit beyond her purview. Um, then again, she plays lots of different things. She runs D&D campaigns with me, so... Um, what is your preference? What do you think are the, first, the best two heroes? would be in terms of uh, gameplay mechanics or fighting style. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, more uh, cards for the bosses here. Uh, bleeding, don't draw those. Uh, Karija. Lots of different variations on the monsters that are in this box. And I believe some of these cards, if I'm mistaken, it'll appear on screen, double for monsters that are in the other boxes. Uh, so you can take on the same but with a lot more <laughs> badassery, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. Which is awesome. I'm here for it. I'm not going to complain. I love it. All right, let's get this sorted. There we go. More monsters. Monster decks. Monster cards, etc. I love it. I love it. And then, if I put these down here out of the way... We have these bad boys. Now, these bad boys, quite sharp, excuse my language, ouch. Like this, for example, this guy. Now these here are actually quite sharp and I've just um, nearly stuck myself on one. So be careful uh, if you are unboxing uh, one of these yourself. The Nightmare expansion, the spiky is very spiky, actually very, very spiky. But I mean, look at it, it's like a crazy ass turtle of death and I, I kind of like it I kind of like it then we have a weird sort of tyrannosaur uh, creature here which is awesome you have uh, I love it I love it it's so good uh, the sticks and twigs and everything else as well the more opening up um, the stances of the monsters the, the battle stances I should say are very very good um, very very happy with the way these have come out and come together and then you have this uh, sort of weird bug-like creature. Um, so the other one was Zithiros. So this is uh, this comes in two different variants, I think. Uh, this is uh, Zikarlith or uh, Zikath. So maybe they attack in waves, or I don't know. But that the, look at the tendrils out of the base here. Gosh. So good, so, so good. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, that, my friends, takes care of all of the major boxes. There's one more left here, which we're gonna go through quickly, and I'll do that mostly on the overhead. And uh, then we'll pretty much be ready to wrap things up, because there's a lot. Uh, and I've still gotta do the flyover as well. My gosh, there's so much. So let's get rid of the Nightmare expansion. We're gonna smash that one down, pop that one there. The final box is this one here. And it's very simple, it is a terrain box. So this is literally a cosmetic upgrade that allows us to put out 
actual rocks and stuff on the table as opposed to the um, tokens that you saw before. So let's put this one out of here. Plastic, of course, goes on the floor. Uh, let's see what we've got. I mean, I do like it. It's literally just jungle, but what lurks in the jungle, that's a different thing altogether. So we have here, all right, so we have a, a series of terrain uh, here as well. You have your standard uh, rocks, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And these rocks are just a, a collection of different rocks. They do have, if you look very carefully, a little divot here. So your minis can hide behind these rocks and use them for cover, stop them from getting you know, annihilated by fire or whatever the case may be. Uh, there are also these little plants here. I think there's a couple of these as well. One, two, three, four of these, one for each quadrant. Now the plants themselves are quite dense and the grass is there. And again, they provide that cover. There's that little, um, you can see the little uh, alcove here where the base can slide under. And then you've got your minis being protected or your heroes or your hunters being protected by those plants, which is just fantastic. I think it's really, really good. Uh, and then you have um, these sort of venomous, I don't know if you can see it there, thorny uh, creatures or, or plants, I should say. Now, these, I believe, um, are part of the Venom expansion. Maybe they're part of the base game. But these plants are not exactly uh, friendly. Uh, you have to be very careful when you're moving through terrain with them because they will try to sting the absolute bejeebas out of you, uh, which brings us to these guys here. I think that's a similar sort of situation. I like these ones. They're cool. It's like Day of the Triffids. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Not showing my age. I just know good stuff, good quality from back in the days of your uh, very very cool two of those and then you have uh, these uh, sort of weird uh, I, I don't know I, I just like the immersion of it I kind of think these ones are like little water basins then that's not what they are but they just give you a sense of I don't know um, atmospheric uh, involvement inclusion things like that which is very very cool and there's a couple of those as well uh, and then you have uh, spiky 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 plants now these ones here are spiky all the way around, but if you get too close and get into the moor, you can see the moor has a very sharp, nasty uh, flytrap sort of vibe. Um, so I'm guessing uh, don't get close to those, uh, don't get pushed into them. Uh, it could be very, very bad. There's two of those in the box here as well. And then you have these big fellas here. These are platforms or plateaus, and of course you can fit your hunter on that board you can see they are quite thick they're hollow um, nice and easy to uh, maneuver around it should be relatively straightforward to paint as well uh, but i like the fact that you can give yourself a bit of a height advantage and i do believe that is a mechanic that you can actually gain a height advantage on some of these things too um, but uh, that i will say that pretty much uh, caps it all off for all of this nonsense um, this is the end of all of the stuff for Primal, uh, Primal, I should say, Primal the Awakening. This is absolutely everything we have <laughs> for this game. Um, there is a lot going on. Uh, we're gonna try and get together and try and figure out a way to make this work as a flyover. Um, that is gonna be a time. Uh, yeah, it, it's a lot, it's a lot. Again, I would love to know what hero, what hunter would you like to see, uh, or would you recommend that we go with uh, to, to kick things off? Um, other than the call box, which expansion do you like best? Nightmare, Feather, Ice, Venom. Um, remembering to remembering to, there are the two heroes in the, uh, the um, Mount Havoc expansion. I just, I don't even know where to start. Uh, probably with the rule book, I would say. Probably start there and then divide the cards up and then to card sleeves and things as well. A lot going on, folks. Uh, we will get into it. Uh, first and foremost, though, as always, we have a flyover for you. So without further ado, before the sun smashes my face, as you can see there, uh, let's clear away this from the table and roll that footage.
And there you have it, folks. That is our unboxing for Primal The Awakening. And not just the core here, but all of the expansion boxes. And uh, you can't really see it around me, but I am surrounded by so much stuff. It is just crazy. Uh, so I'm going to begin the inevitable and arduous task of cleaning up. But uh, stay with us because we're going to have heaps more content coming your way. There's about 250 plus other videos for you to consume for your enjoyment if you haven't already done so. Uh, and then we've got more content coming your way soon. Uh, we're looking at doing some more D&D stuff, but also some more uh, playthroughs. We haven't done one of those in a while. So we'd love to hear from you as to what you would like to see us play. Um, by all means, pop them in the comments below. Drop us a link in the video. And of course, uh, we are starting to get a few of you joining our memberships. Uh, there is a bit of limited content at this stage. We're hoping to create more for you uh, in the not too distant future. Um, by all means, join up. Uh, it's a small donation from yourselves, but it means the world to us. Thank you very, very much indeed in advance. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess without further ado, folks, we're going to go from now. Uh, we're going to finish up here. We will come back with more epic content in the not too distant future. But uh, for the moment, Moment, be sure to get back out there get back to the table play more games be kind always always be kind and we'll see you back here very very soon until then though it is as always bye for now